Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for the Kruskal-Wallis test in SPSS. So the Kruskal-Wallis H test is the non-parametric equivalent of a one-way ANOVA. And we would use the Kruskal-Wallis when we have data that would normally be analyzed by one-way ANOVA, but we fail to meet the assumptions of ANOVA. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, I have an ID variable, and there are 45 records. And I have a treatment variable. This is the independent variable. It has three levels, CBT, reality therapy, and treatment as usual. And then I have a variable named anxiety. And let's assume that these are scores from an anxiety inventory, a psychometric test that measures anxiety levels. And let's assume in this case that we're worried about the assumption for ANOVA where the dependent variable needs to be normally distributed for each level of the independent variable. Right, so to test that we would go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. For factor list I'm just going to move Treatment there and then anxiety goes to the dependent list and then under statistics I'm going to add outliers there and there are plots uh, I'm not going to use the stem and leaf plot I am going to check off histogram and normality plots with tests click continue and click OK so we can see here looking before we even get to the Shapiro Wilk we can see from the descriptives that the skewness level for the CBT level of the independent variable as measured on the anxiety dependent variable the skewness is negative one and it's also negative one for treatment as usual and one common guideline for skewness would be that if we have an absolute value for the skewness statistic that exceeds 0.8 that could indicate some trouble with normality. And of course we have the Shapiro-Wilk. And SPSS for a test of normality will run Kolmogorov smirnoff and Shapiro-Wilk together. But I'm going to interpret Shapiro-Wilk here. And you can see that we're okay for CBT and for treatment as usual, meaning we have a non-statistically significant finding there. But for reality therapy, we do have a statistically significant finding on Shapiro-Wilk. And although this, these violations of normality, you could argue that since the CBT level is good, treatment, you, treatment as usual level is good, and the reality level isn't, but the test is robust to violations of normality, ANOVA is, a case could certainly be made here for pushing forward and simply conducting a one-way ANOVA. But we'll assume that we're going to take a conservative approach here, and then we want to look at the non-parametric equivalent, which would be Kruskal-Wallis. Now, Kruskal-Wallis does not have an assumption for normality for the dependent variable, or the assumption of no outliers, which is also an assumption of ANOVA. However, the Kruskal-Wallis test does have assumptions. The observations have to be independent, and that's the same assumption as for the one-way ANOVA. The dependent variable has to be recorded at the ordinal, interval, or ratio level. And in this case, we'll assume that these data for the dependent variable were recorded as interval level. And of course, you need two or more levels for the independent variable. In this case, we have three levels of the independent variable. We have CBT, reality, therapy, and treatment as usual. The last assumption for Kruskal-Wallis is where we'll spend a little time, and that is that the distributions on the dependent variable need to have the same shape. So the distribution for CBT, reality, and treatment as usual, these three distributions on the dependent variable anxiety need to have the same shape. And there are a couple of ways that I'm going to test that here, and I've actually already produce the output while checking for the ANOVA assumptions by checking off histogram and outliers. 
So let's take a look at the histograms first. So these histograms are broken down by level of the independent variable because that's how it was set up in the explore dialog. So through visual inspection we want to determine if this distribution, the CBT distribution, the reality distribution, and the treatment as usual distribution are substantially similar. And if we look here we can see that this is clearly negatively skewed. Of course we already knew that from the descriptives. The value was less than negative one. We can see more scores to the right and fewer scores to the left. And moving down to reality, we generally have the same distribution. Right? These bars are low uh, in the left here of the histogram and high in the right part of the histogram. And the same thing for treatment as usual. So by looking at these three histograms, we would say they are similar and that these three distributions have the same shape. And then if we move down to the box plot, we can see there are no outliers here. But if there were outliers, that would be OK, as that's not an assumption of the Kruskal-Wallis. You can't have outliers. But what we're looking for here is really the same thing that we're looking for using the histograms, which is that the groups have the same shape, the distributions have the same shape. And the way we determine it using the box plots is by looking at the relationship between the top whisker and the top of the interquartile range, that's the rectangle here, and the bottom whisker. And you can see that the general pattern for all three of these levels of the independent variable appears to be similar. The top whisker is fairly close to the top of the interquartile range, and the bottom whisker is fairly distant from the bottom of the interquartile range. And we have more or less have the same thing with reality, therapy, and then with treatment as usual, we have the same thing. So using the histograms and taking a look at the box plot, this gives you two ways of looking at the data to determine the same thing, which is are the distributions similarly shaped. So because we've decided here to go to Kreskel Wallace, let's go ahead and run that test. And that'll be analyze. We'll go down to non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and K independent samples. K independent samples. And for the test variable list, that's going to be anxiety. The grouping variable here, of course, is treatment by default. The test type will be Kreskel Wallace H. Under options, I'm just going to add descriptive. Click continue. And you can see when we moved treatment over to the grouping variable, you have these question marks. That's because we need to define this range. So I just click in there and click define range. Now, the levels of the independent variable in this data set were coded as 0, 1, and 2. So the minimum is going to be 0, and the maximum is going to be 2. So 0 is CBT. One is reality therapy, and two is treatment as usual. Click Continue, and now you can click OK down here. And we can see the results for the kruskal wallis H test. Now we have a statistically significant finding here under test statistics. But just as the case would be with ANOVA, we don't know where the difference is without doing some sort of post hoc test. Now, of course, if we look at the mean rank, for CBT, reality, and treatment as usual, we can see for CBT it's 8.1, it's 31 for reality, and almost 30 for treatment as usual. We can probably guess where the difference is. However, it's still important to run the test to make sure. And the post hoc test for a Kruskal Wallace test would be a Man Whitney U. So I go back to analyze and non parametric test legacy dialogues, instead of selecting K independent samples, as I did before, I'll just go with two independent samples. And you can see by default, it's a Man Whitney U. And there are three pairs that I need to test, 0 and 1, 1 and 2, and 0 and 2. So I'll start with 0 and 1. So this would be comparing CBT 
and reality. And again, we're going to interpret this p-value just as we would with ANOVA, meaning we're going to do a Bonferroni correction. We're going to take the alpha, which is 0 0.05, and divide it by the number of levels. So for the interpretation of the Mann-Whitney U results, we would reset the alpha to 0 0.016. So I'm going to click Continue and click OK. So again, this is looking at CBT and reality. And you can see from test statistics, we do have a statistically significant result between these two levels of the independent variable. So we go back in to Analyze, and we'll move back to the Man Whitney U. And I'll just go here and define group one, in this case, still a zero, but change group two to two. So this would be CBT compared to treatment as usual. Group zero and group two. Click Continue, click OK. And you can see here CBT and treatment as usual. And for test statistics, again, we have a statistically significant result. And then for the final pairwise comparison, again, non-parametric tests, all the way over to two independent samples. And the last group here would be 1 and 2. So I'll change group 1 to 1, leave group 2 as 2. So this would be reality and treatment as usual. Click Continue, click OK. You can see here reality therapy, treatment as usual. And we do not have statistical significance here. So the other two comparisons, CBT and reality, and CBT and treatment as usual, even using the lower alpha of 0 0.016, they were both statistically significant. The comparison between reality and treatment as usual is not statistically significant. I hope you found this video on testing the assumptions for the Kreskel Wallace test and SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.